Alright, this is gonna be my personal opinion on the Detroit Lions, you know, after two weeks of the young NFL season, right? Like, Detroit Lions, everyone knows if you're an NFL fan of how they finished off at 8 and 2 of the last 10 games. Came in Kansas City and won on the road. The defense didn't sack the quarterback, of course, but they applied the pressure that was needed to and to make poor decisions and poor throws by Patrick Mahomes. This year, of what I've seen so far and what I don't like about how the Detroit Lions is rolling, doing things is like the offense is going to score points. Like my biggest, my biggest fear is of course, and everyone else's fear is if St. Brown gets hurt and he's good, get hurt for a good bit, you know, long lengthy time before we can get Jameis Williams even on the field, you know, It'd be great to have those two on the field at the same time with Jamar Gibbs, and it'll probably open up the playbook a little bit more, and we'll look, probably look a little bit more explosive. But the way in our running, like, and David Montgomery being hurt too is going to be a big factor as well. Like, it's almost like DeAndre Swift when he was here with us last year, and we needed somebody to carry the load, which was Jamal Williams. Uh, Jamar Gibbs, you know, I figured, in my my personal opinion, I thought he would look better than what he does. Now, week one, it was like, yeah, they, like, wow, that dude was, he, he looked good. Not great, but good. But, this, but if everyone ever watched him, run the ball. You don't hit the whole hard north and south. Like when he has to run, if a play is run between the guard and the center or the guard and the tackle on the inside, you will watch him what he does. Like I watched that Seattle game and I don't know exactly what play it was. I think it was just a single back. And it looked like it was a sweep to the right. And how it, I figured, I think it was a halfback tackle run. He was supposed to go off the outside of the tackle. The tackle and the tight end, or, you know, they're supposed to push their players, their, the, the player that's across from them out and then you know you got your guard and your center they gotta go inward you know to kind of get that hole opened up and it did happen a whole bit a hole was there but Gibbs instead of hitting that hole hard he bounced to the outside and got tackled for like two or three yards for a loss now he is a rookie it is faster than what college was so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt but my personal opinion, if he ain't got 500 rushing yards by week nine, I think he's a bust. That's In a quarter of a mile. 65 yards. At the roundabout, right take the second exit. As of right now, he has to have 65 yards at least every game from here. From here. I might take 500 total yards receiving and uh, running. I might take both, but like just to think about, you know, even if we couldn't get Gibbs, you can't tell me that there wasn't a running back. We could have got Zach Charbonnet. You know, we could have got him instead of Seattle because Zach Charbonnet got picked, you know, a little bit later in the draft. So we probably could have gotten Jalen Carter and second round. Exit the roundabout. Pick up Zach Charbonnet which is a more power back downhill runner. But the, pe- the running backs that run more north and south 
they're used and know how to hit the hole hard. Gibbs at Alabama was always a type of guy to beat the outside because he was always faster than everybody. Well, in the NFL, speed's a little bit closer than it is in college. So the whole wanting to bounce to the outside the whole time, that might not work every single time. Especially if the tight ends can't wrap around and block, kick out the defensive end. Now, golf has played good. I'm not going to bash golf at all. Like, golf has done better than what most quarterbacks that are MVP caliber quarterbacks. And he's doing better than that right now. Like, Joe Burrow is having a bad start, you know. Patrick Mahomes, you know, he had a pick six in opening week. Golf has a pick six in week two. One and one, you know. So, golf isn't doing too bad right now. So, I ain't going to bash golf. Now, the offense, we need more offensive weapons. We can't just have St. Brown. We need another route running, good receiving, route receiver, deep threat receiver, somebody that's going to jump up, and hopefully that's Jameis Williams. Hopefully he, that speed that he has, hopefully we can get him on a lot of seams, and hopefully he can outrun the defender if they play man, and hopefully golf can make the, so far golf don't look bad at throwing it deep. But David Montgomery's hurt now, so hopefully our O line and hopefully our wide receivers could get open to St. Brown can't do everything either. Like a defense, you know, in a quarter of a mile. The defense Turn right. of stay stop St. Brown on offense. And stop A and Hudson on defense then they pretty much wiped out a whole entire game plan. Because St. Brown right now is our most reliable Turn right. to be able to make the catches that we need to be caught to win games. But if he gets hurt or if he gets double teamed, and he gets double teamed, It makes it to where if no one else on that D-line is applying pressure, it makes it to where they could pretty much pick on Aiden. Which, you know, if I was a, a coach, a head coach, going into a game playing the Lions, that's exactly what I would do. I would say stop Aiden because he's the only person that could apply pressure. James Houston is hurt. Aiden Hutchinson is the only person that applied pressure. Double team him the whole game, wear him out. When it comes down defense, I would say cover St. Brown, double team him. Don't let – we could give up two or three yards at a time. But do not give up big chunks of yards to St. Brown. Chip him if you have to to knock him off his route. Because once you do that, you technically paralyze – the Lions. And that's what I've seen from week one to week two. Yes, injuries happen. But I have a feeling that if we don't get help for St. Brown at the receiver court, look, Sam LaPorta played good. We need to open up the playbook to make it where Sam LaPorta can actually get more catches and more balls thrown to him. But he also has to get open. If he ain't open in time, then Golf has to go to somewhere else. And on the defense, you know, why do our defense run a 4-2-5? Like, no good defense in the NFL runs a 4-2-5. They might run it maybe once or twice. They might have a four little formations, you know, on fourth down or third down when they need more DBs on the field. But most good defenses, like I looked it up, like Cincinnati, um, 49ers, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, uh, Chargers, all of them play a normal 
base 4-3 defense. Which I don't understand why we cannot play a 4-3 defense. There's better packaging schemes to be able to blitz instead of having two linebackers. Like, like, just a general. And if we run a 3-4, put Aiden at one of those outside linebacker spots. Have him where he drops in the cover sometimes. And have it where he goes in a two-point stance and he rushes the quarterback. And Aiden Hutchinson needs to always be, in my opinion, on... In a quarter of a mile. I Keep right at the fork. He needs to be on the strong side because most times the strong side is the ball that he runs. They run to. And we need another good edge rusher. We need somebody. Like, if we, it would have been awesome if we would have got Chase Young and free agents. Yes, Chase Young. Keep right at the fork. Prone. But when healthy, you know, he probably could have been that impact, that impact player that we needed on that D-line to help Aiden Hutchinson. Now, if James Houston was not hurt, I would say James Houston would be that impact player. But so far of what I've seen, it's our defense that's been making us lose the games. So if... Aaron Glenn don't go or change that scheme of 4-2-5 defense because he thinks that having more DBs on the field will help. That's not always the case. More DBs not always don't always help. And our biggest issue is always giving up big runs. Yeah, Seattle torched us in the middle of the field with the tight end because our linebackers were not in place because we only got two flipping linebackers playing center of the field. Yeah, you got your safeties and your corners and stuff to be able to make up for that other linebacker, but they've been saying that, you know, we have so much skillful talent at the linebacker corp. Why don't we have it where we have more linebackers on the field and save injury prom for DBs? You know, put C.J. Garner Johnson at corner or put now that he's hurt. What I would have done at the beginning was put C.J. Garner Johnson at corner, put, of course, Mosley at corner, but he's hurt. And Tracy Walker take his spot, have Tracy Walker and have C.J. Garner Johnson on the field both at all times and find a way to get DJ uh, Brian Branch involved in it like if we run a 3-4 why not have Brian Branch because he's not the fastest person but why not have him as an outside linebacker you know then you can have him on the field Tracy Walker on the field yeah, you want to have depth and you want to avoid injuries. So, in that case, you know, have your three start in a quarter of a mile. In my opinion, I would have turn right. Middle linebacker, I would like to see Jack Campbell. Anzalone, he's turn quick. right. If you ever see him explode chasing the quarterback when there's a hole? Like he has acceleration. Like he's quick, but he's not good all the time. Have him at one of the outside linebackers. Malcolm Rodriguez, outside linebacker. There you go. Malcolm Rodriguez, Alex Lanz, and then rotate him with Derek Barnes and rotate, you know, and rotate him. And like I said, if you run a 3-4 defense, that gives you opportunity to be able to put Aiden Hutchinson with that rotation. Aiden Hutchinson is long. He's, he's able to pat balls down, and he's quick, and he's strong. You know how many packages – like Oakland Raiders ran with uh, Mac when he was there, and Chicago when he was there, they ran three four. And Mac is actually uh, Kilio Mac is actually contender, considered a linebacker. And most time he go he rushes, he rushes, but he's considered a linebacker. So there's so many things that the Lions can do. It is week two. It's still young. Atlanta scares me because our deep, my deep, the defense scares me. I have a feeling that they ain't going to do anything different. I have a feeling that they're going to do the same thing. 
I have a feeling that our injuries are going to make a big, big, big impact. I don't think we have the depth there, but maybe and hopefully they prove us wrong. Atlanta have shown that they have an offense, which scares me because we ain't got a defense. If St. Brown is hurt, if Jamar Gibbs don't average at least four yards a carry, and the other running back is Xavier Knight, if we don't get anything quickly against Atlanta, I have a feeling it's gonna it's gonna be bad. If if we don't change schemes now, figure out something, because right now our defense is killing us, and that's what happened last year and. How do we not know that last year, the last 10 games, how do we not know that those teams that we played were good? You know what I mean? Like, maybe, like, hopefully it's not one of those fake years where, like, a hopeful year and it turns out fake. If injuries happen, yeah, next man up. No excuse. Every NFL team has injuries. Every year on in the NFL has a star player go down for a lengthy amount of time, and they still manage to find win games. Now, Dan Cam won his fourth down, fourth downs. Me personally against Seattle. After the first one didn't work, I probably would have been more concerned. I probably would have just stepped back, and I probably would have just because you gotta think if we would have had those field goals. We wouldn't have we there's we probably would have beat Seattle. Uh, but if we would have got those fourth down conversions, everyone would call him a genius. So I'm not gonna sit there and say they're a bad call because in my personal opinion, if you like it if it's made like if it's a fourth and two, fourth and one and they go for it and you like it. And they get it, and you say, oh, that's genius. Then you have to hate it. You don't, I mean, you don't have to hate it. You don't need to dislike it or dishate it if it doesn't work. Now, if it's a fourth and five, it's like, dude, don't go for it. But if it's fourth and one, fourth and two, even fourth and three, I would say, depends on how your offense is running. I'm not going to bash Dan Campbell. I think Dan Campbell's a good coach. We have an offensive coordinator. The biggest problem is defensive coordinator. That's the biggest problem and the biggest issue I have with the Detroit Lions is the defense of coordinator. He didn't do anything, didn't change anything up. He almost looked like Michigan a few years ago when they was playing Ohio State, when Ohio State was just running cross cross routes all day long and we was playing man and we made no adjustments at halftime and they came out and stomped us the exact same way getting beat the whole entire time if we lose to Atlanta if we give up over 250 yards to Atlanta on defense and say that we lose and it's because of defense Aaron Glenn needs to be fired straight up and if it comes down to it have Dan Campbell run the defense he's he has a lot of aggressive – he's an aggressive coach, so and he's aggressive play call. So you think that him being a defensive uh, defensive uh, coach thinking, you think he'll have, add up a lot of blitz packaging, you know, and be aggressive at that because right now we need something to help Aiden out. If we don't get anybody for that D-line to help out Aiden Hutchinson relieve the double team and relieve – the energy and the exhaust, exhausting, you know, of getting double team that Aiden gets, it will make this defense improve so much better. But that's all I have to say about the Detroit Lions. I'm, I'm week two uh, and week one. I might start doing this every week. I might start talking about my opinion. I mean, people might be like, who cares about your opinion? But who knows? I might share the same opinions with the same Detroit Lions fans. And if you disagree and you listen, go ahead and comment on what you believe and what I'm wrong about. And I will do my best to try addressing it. 
on the next video. Uh, we play Atlanta. Atlanta, I do believe, comes to us. So let's just pray that we get this win and start out two and one. Because if we start off one and two, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna look bad, and it's gonna make me start to. I'm a. I like to have faith, and I like to believe. And I've always. I've been a Detroit Lions there. Lions fan probably since Matthew Stafford got there. I kind of watched them when they was 0-16. I kind of kept up with them, kind of understood. Like, I kind of knew the players that were on that team. But I didn't really start watching Detroit Lions since Matthew Stafford. So, every year with Matthew Stafford, you know, there's been, always been that hype. And we've always had a defense, but we always seem not to have an offense. And we've made it to the playoffs, and, you know, and we've always had that hype. But this year, it just felt different. Like, it just... Felt different. Like, I just hope that it is different. I hope that we don't, that if we go to the playoffs, hopefully we win it. Like, we deserve a playoff win. I would like to see a playoff win. Like, I'm a Michigan fan, of course. So, I'm a big Michigan fan. And, you know, my team's already won, you know, back to back conference champions. Chips, so I kind of feel good about that because at least my college team has done something. They ain't won a national championship, which is kind of irritating. We made it to the college football playoffs back to back years, but lost the first round, which of course, again, is frustrating. And I was also born, and you know, at U of M. I was born in Michigan, but I was also raised in Alabama. I was raised in Alabama for probably about eight, 16, eight to I was I moved down there when I was six. And I moved down, moved back up to Michigan when I was about 19, 20. So I lived in Alabama pretty much my whole life, and I, uh, you know, I became an Auburn fan. I've been an Auburn fan longer than I have been a Michigan fan and probably a uh, Lions fan. I kept up with Auburn since '04, back in second grade, uh, and you know I'm glad to see a national championship from Auburn, from one of my college football teams, Cam Newton, and Michael Dyer when both when he was the running back, you know, it was a very good team that year. Uh, you know, they kind of fell downhill since then, you know, they ain't done as good, but, you know, Michigan's made up for it. You know, when Auburn was doing good, Michigan was kind of sucking, so it kind of helped me. In a yeah. quarter of a mile. Be able to go for one team and turn not, left. Uh, you know, pay attention to one and not really pay attention to the other. I pay. I was to Auburn, you know, in the Alabama game, of course, all the time. But I don't keep up with Auburn as much as I used to because they aren't as good. And Michigan is good, so it turn left. Of attention off of Auburn and go to Michigan. So I've been focused on Michigan for this last six or seven years. I'm sorry that, you know, I went into college football, you know, like that, you know, but I'm kind of just giving y'all a little info put on, on me because most likely if you watch this video, you most likely subscribe to me, which means you most likely watch my gaming videos. So I don't talk in much and most of y'all don't know much about me. And the reason why it's a black screen and it's just my voice is because I'm driving I'm on my way home from work and when I'm on my way home from work I have time to think and you know I want to be able to just say what I want to say and don't forget it you know so I'm like you know what I have a YouTube channel uh, why not talk about football because I love talking about football and talk about the teams I like and love you know and who knows I might start talking about Michigan Depends on how much, how many people, how many views I get on this. I might, I might talk some Michigan football. You know, the three interceptions. I didn't watch the Michigan football game because it was playing Bowling Green and it was, and it was a late game, and so I had stuff to do. So I just kept up with the score, and you know, I didn't know JJ McCarthy threw with three interceptions. You know, and that's, and that's a big scare for me. And another thing that's a big scare for me is that what made Michigan good the past two years when we won back to back that. Uh, conference championships and made back-to-back -back playoff appearances was because of running game. 
and now that a running game is, hasn't been as good as it's recently been, it's taken it where we have to pass more and be one dimensional. Which before we always were one dimensional, one dimensional, just running the ball and not throwing enough ball, not throwing it enough times and not mixing it up. Well, this year it seems like we might not be as good at running the ball, so it's going to make it to where we have to pass a lot. And if JJ McCarthy, I'm guessing he threw three interceptions, and I'm guessing it's because he were he was throwing it too hard, like he was trying to get it off quick, like he wasn't making his full reads. And that's something, you know, he last year was his first start. So you got to think, he's still kind of young at playing. He's only a junior. You know, who knows? He might come back next year. Uh, So there's high hopes for Michigan. Hopefully, both aren't upsets. And my prediction for the Lions... I can see him going ten and seven before before the season started and the injuries happened. I was saying twelve and four, but we do got to play Dallas and their defense is good. Uh, we do got to play Green Bay twice and that scares me. We do got to play Minnesota twice and that scares me. Minnesota isn't all that good, but if our defense does it improve those games that you think are W's and wins turn into L's because the only reason why you are having them to win is because you think that the defense is going to be able to make stops and the offense is going to be able to score points if our defense cannot make stops then I'm telling you right now we'll go 10 and 7 if, no, if we get all our injuries back, get all our players back, I can see us losing seven games before we get everybody back. And then when we get everybody back, that's when we're going to start clicking. So let's hope we're 10 and 7. Let's hope we win the division. Let's just hope. Hope, hope. You can't go 5 and 1 last year in the division and not repeat. Not when it seems like everybody else in the division has gotten worse than they were last year, but it seems like we have fell off than last year. So, go Lions, go Blue, War Eagle, and I'll talk to y'all later.